Hey guys, how's it going? It's a beautiful morning here in Eastern Oregon. I got out here a little bit early today because it is still supposed to get quite hot, like it feels cool right now. There's a little breeze, but it's supposed to get to 103 today. So I thought I would get out here and do a little bit of planting. I've got kind of a mixed bag grouping of plants here, all gorgeous. I've got a Pacific Blue Macedonian Pine. Isn't that pretty? I went and picked this up down at the garden center yesterday morning because they started their great big sale today. And I thought I had better get down there and get that pine that I've been eyeballing. So I did that. Uh, here's the tag right here. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, but it is hardy down to negative 30, so that's a zone four, and it grows 20 feet tall by 15 feet wide. It puts on about 12 to 15 inches per year. So, I mean, as evergreens go, go that's pretty good, I think. Then we've got some pincushion flower here. This is Harlequin Blue, fairly common one, but pincushion flower, you guys, if you want a hardworking, productive perennial that's super tough. This is a really good one. And it can do sun to part shade. And this one I think grows about foot to foot and a half tall. Let me look. Yeah, foot and a half tall, one to one and a half feet wide. It is a zone four. Um, once they're established, they can handle less water than some of your other perennials as well. Then we have a kind of a ground cover type geranium. And you know, we just got back from the Grand Garden Show on Mackinac Island day before yesterday. And so there's always something that I've kind of taken away, several things really. And every single time we're able to go, it's something different. It's either, you know, really strong, tidy borders, um, a certain type of plant that I'm seeing mass planted. Uh, but Jack Barnwell, when he designs a landscape, and we talked about this during one of our tours, but he relies heavily on tough, ground cover perennials. And that's what this one is right here. So this is a Biacovo, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, geranium. And it grows only eight inches tall and 18 inches wide, can do sun to part shade, and it is hardy down to uh, zone four, and it's long blooming. You can see it's got kind of a delicate pink bloom there. I think I'm gonna plant this along the west side of our house. I'm wanting some more of this kind of lush foliage right there. I don't even mind that it's not in bloom for the whole season. These typically get really good fall color too, so that's something to consider. And then the last thing we have here, this is a brand new rose for next year called Ringo Double Pink. Look at how beautiful these flowers are, you guys. So they have bright yellow stamens, kind of a dark pink blush of an eye down in there, and then this delicate soft pink. Let me see if I can show you a bud stage here. Look at that, kind of that smoky pink color and they age to kind of this light pink before they, you know, lose their petals. Woo, breeze is picking up a little bit. It feels awesome. But this rose, you guys, grows two to three feet tall and wide. So it's not a huge rose. It continues to bloom all through the season, kind of like the oh so easies that I have planted around in here. Um, and they're zone four through nine. So anyway, low maintenance rose that I don't have to be fussing with and deadheading all the time. And I do like the color of the leaves, deep green. A Little bit of water spotting on it, but look at this, like the fresher leaves. They won't have water spotting on them out here uh, because we've got all of our plants out here on drip. I'm actually not sure that I want to plant these as a mass. Like out here, I've been planting, because it's such a large space, I usually plant drifts of things large drifts so that it makes a statement and it shows up. Otherwise, things can tend to look a little bit messy, but there are some things that I just kind of want to dot around for just a little accent color. Um, so that might be what I do with this. Like I don't even have a designated spot for these. They're just looking really pretty and I thought it would be good to get them out today. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the order of the morning. We're just gonna run around and get these things planted. And I'm excited about it. Also, when you can kind of feel that cool edge to the air, it's just reinvigorating. I'm just looking forward to fall so much. For example, I kind of thought one of these might be real pretty right over here. So we've got a Desert Plains Penicetum and then we've got some uh, lavender right here. So the lavender color and then a pink rose, I think that would be really nice. And maybe we'll do a trio in here, like maybe one, two, and then put another one by these geraniums. Look at these hardy geraniums, aren't these awesome? They're just one of the best perennials. It looks like I have one of my Ecobecchias is trying to make a comeback here. And then the white swans, of course, look beautiful. Echinacea. Grab a couple more of these roses and see what a trio looks like. And then maybe we'll use, I've got five of them. We can dot the other two around differently. Oh yeah, that pink looks pretty there. So we can do it like that or I can bump it back like this. And that leaves us a room to do a drift of something wonderful in front of them. 
Yeah, let's do that. I think I like that. I think I'll pop the other one right here. This area is not developed very much at all, but we've got some uh, mock orange. There's three of them around this locust tree. And then I've got some uh, purple salvia. So it might look nice. And then these are like a smoky pink daylily. Might look nice to have one of the roses here. And I think we'll pop this one here. We've got some, what are these? Blue Chip Junior, I think, <laughs> a Budlia. They're looking really nice. Might be nice to have some soft pink right behind them to kind of incorporate. Okay, I've got my Biotone Starter Fertilizer. We've got the Auger. So let's get these in the ground. So now we'll plant the pine and then we'll take a look at all of them before we move with the perennials toward the west side of the house. I'm going to be planting this pine in place of an evergreen that did not thrive. So we're on this side of the south garden now. Everything's looking pretty good except for that guy right there. That is a haywire cypress. I planted three of the haywire cypress last season, two of which are doing really well. This one, I don't know if the drip malfunctioned, that's probably what happened. Um, and we just didn't catch it in time. There's still a little bit of life in it, but I don't think enough to uh, try to limp it through. Plus, I'm honestly thinking something blue right here would look better. So sometimes things happen in the garden and create an opportunity for something even better in that spot. It's the way we have to look at it sometimes, right? So if we go back in here, you will see we've got boxwoods. These are all for around the Hartley, and we've got some other evergreens to plant. This is the cypress right here. So you can see there's like a little bit of green down toward the bottom, but even that doesn't feel very good, and the rest of it just fried. So I don't know. I don't even know if it's rooted in really well. Oh, I might need a shovel. Nope, got it. It didn't really root out all that much since last season, and it looks like drip has been added so the pine should be all right oh look at these sparkling amethyst superbina aren't those awesome oh so pretty just gonna set this here we'll stand back and take a look oh yeah that's gonna be really pretty right there all right let's do it Okay, the pine is in. It looks really good right there. Really good. Should have plenty of space to grow right there, but it's not a, you know, enormously fast grower, so we should be all right. We've got a in terms of other things that grow bigger, but we've got a katsura tree right here, and then we've got a magic what's it? Magical globe, right? Birch, which it won't get much bigger than that. And then I'm kind of planning on putting a little arbor gazebo kind of thing right back in here. The only thing that's planted back in this space is that big willow. Um, so we do plan on putting another large evergreen back here and then probably, well, there is a Norway spruce right there. So anyway, lots of fun stuff. The Budley, as we planted earlier, are doing so well. And then these are a melon colored echinacea, which um, typically I don't deadhead my echinacea. I usually do the first year, so I should probably come out here and do that just to let them focus on root development, but we've got Betany, look at that panicum. That is a totem pole panicum, and isn't that just the most striking vertical accent? I do think I want to put something with maybe like orangey red leaves right here. Uh, we've got an Aphrodite, is it Calicanthus? Is that right? God, it's my first time planting one. It's doing great. I mean, just phenomenal. It's gone through 110 degree temperatures. I mean, you can see this is a whole new branch right here. 
and it's got blooms forming. These smell like uh, aged grapes to me. They're wonderful. And there's new growth right here. All this right here, new growth, new growth. I mean, just, I'm so thrilled by that because I thought we couldn't grow these here. Sometimes you just gotta try something, even if you think it might fail, because it may not, and you might surprise yourself. Anyway, I think something with more of that autumnal color of red, because we do have a black lace elderberry, which is that deep color. But I think something to pop right in here would look nice. But anyway, it's just filling in beautifully. I'm loving it. Okay, I did an auger swap, so I was using the nine inch auger to plant the roses and the pine I went down to is this like a five inch or four inch or something like that anyway that's what I'll use to plant all of these let me pop over here and show you the roses quick before we head to the house so there's our first grouping right there I absolutely love how those look right there I think that is going to be such a beautiful color uh, for this space since I don't really have anything pink in this area yet it's crazy got a lot of purple well, I do have a coral berry, which will have pink berries. So, you know, that counts. And then just down the way here, there's the other one just behind the buddleias. And then there's the fifth one right there in this kind of little sad-ish looking area at the moment. We're working on it. We'll get there. In other happy news, the uh, Caryopteris that we planted that looked so bad <laughs> and like they had completely shocked, look really good. Encouraged. This little spot's looking awesome too. Purple haze buddleia. This is the bit of honey Heliopsis right here. Isn't that just vibrant and gorgeous? You can see pollinators all over already. Cat's pajamas nepeta. I've cut them back one time uh, and they're looking gorgeous. And then we've got the royal raspberry agastache right there. And just a slew of other things looking awesome. Okay, let's go plant the little ones up by the house. It's always really fun to plant little things. <laughs> It's so nice and easy. Also, if you think you're having a bad day, just be thankful you're not one of my house plants. <laughs> this one's going to the compost heap today. The uh, Cosmos and Zinnias we planted the other day are looking great. Lots of growth. All right, guys, we're on the west side now. There's Russell. Hey, buddy, where you been? Anyway, we've had uh, hookahs in this spot and you can kind of see them a little bit and I'll leave them there and just plant the geraniums around them. Hookahs are a hit and miss for us. Um, sometimes they come back okay, sometimes they don't. Um, they're not super reliable uh, in our climate. I don't know if the winter is too dry or too, I, I don't know. Um, these are looking a little bit better, but you can see also what our hostas tend to look like toward the end of, end of the year. Like if we were to groom off every damaged leaf, we would have no plant left. And do you remember what these look like this spring? They were glorious but we get so much dry heat and so much wind that it just, it just ruins, it just ruins the plants. Doesn't matter how much water you give them either. But I do love hostas and I do love hookahs, so I will probably continue to plant them. And sometimes you find that sweet spot in your garden where something that normally doesn't, you know, look really great in maybe other areas of your yard will take and look amazing. So I'm just like hoping I find that spot at some point. And they really do look good for most of the season. I mean, early on, all the way up till, I would say even just like a couple of weeks ago is when they started to share, uh, show their like tiredness. Uh, you know, coming back from Mackinac too and looking at how their hostas look where it's rainy and more mild. Oh, they look so good. <laughs> I knew I was going to come home to these scrawny looking plants. So we need to work on filling in the area below them so that once they start to do this, we have something to back up, you know, the area and look good. If that makes sense. Back up the area. I'm so bad at explaining things. Okay, let's get the geraniums in. <laughs>
Okay, so not only did I hit one drip line, but I hit two with the auger. I mean, I can go months without hitting a drip line. And then in one day, I hit two. It was easy fix. I just had to clip out the part that I wrecked and put a coupler in. But what happens is that auger has a heavy duty, it's called a heavy duty tip on the end. It's kind of like a pilot hole. It drills a pilot hole before the actual auger goes down into the soil. So it really helps drive the auger down if you've got super compacted hard soil. But if you happen to put the tip of that right on top of the, the drip line, it'll pop a hole in it real fast. And that's what happened twice. So here are the geraniums looking good. And what I think I might do is see if I can get some of these on order and just continue planting these around the hostas, up around the auger. Oh, <laughs> she's having a big time. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> Anyway, in around the hydrangeas, around the hostas, and continue on back behind these hookahs, just so it's a solid mat of the geranium foliage underneath those hostas. I think that would look really, really good. So I'm gonna try to do that maybe even this fall. And then the pincushion flowers I put right in this little pocket here. I had transplanted some birch hybrid campanula from underneath the crab apple tree in our front yard last fall maybe, or the fall before. Might have been the fall before. One of them took, it's right there, um, and that will work its way around the pincushion flower eventually, but it'll be nice to have something right here that will provide some good color uh, once it's established. I've got an oh so easy paprika rose, which usually looks amazing, but this whole area was just struck by spider mites. Um, so it kind of took the plant back a little bit, but it's looking a lot better and it's pushing fresh growth. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And it's got, well, you can see kind of, it's got these kind of orangey yellow blooms, which are usually a little bit bigger than that. But I think that that will look pretty with the purple blooms right down below. And that is it, you guys, for our planting projects this morning. What a beautiful, beautiful day to be out here. I mean, I can feel that little bit of cool in the air. I know it's coming. I know fall is on its way. And it's nice to get these plants in now, even though it gets hot in the day. In high desert, what happens is it gets really hot, but it takes all day to do it uh, because we'll go down like one of the nights this week, I think it's supposed to be like 58 or 57. So it can be 100 degrees and go down to 57 at night. So it gives everything a break and then it takes a good part of the day to reach that high of a temperature. So it's really starting to back off and things Aren't, I'm not worried about things shocking um, like I was when you know it was 110 even though it shifted down at that point it's, that's still really hot um, anyway these plants will have a good chance to get rooted in and uh, settled in their spot before winter comes so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one bye